Do studio monitor stands really have an effect on sound quality? Let's set up a binaural microphone test so that you can hear the difference for yourself. There are a few different ways that stands could impact the sound quality of your system. First, they allow you to position the speakers so that your ears are on axis with the high frequency drivers when you're sitting in the listening position. Pointing the speakers directly at your ears optimizes the frequency balance. High frequencies are more directional than low frequencies, so it may start to sound a bit muffled if the speakers aren't directly pointed towards you. That's the case both vertically and horizontally. Stands allow you to elevate the speakers so that the high frequency drivers are at ear height. Second, stands could allow you to place the studio monitors in the optimal position horizontally. You should try to form an equilateral triangle between the listening position and the two speakers. In other words, the distance between you and each speaker should be equal to the distance between the speakers. This will impact the stereo image or the blend of each instrument between the left and the right speaker that creates dimension within the sound stage. The distance between you and your studio monitors will vary depending on the studio monitors you're using, the size of your room, and a number of other factors. For example, while it's often difficult to completely avoid the reflection off of the desk, studio monitor stands could allow you to move the studio monitors further away so that the angle of the reflection becomes so obtuse that it no longer reflects sound up to your ears. You want to avoid any reflections that you can as they can cause interference that negatively impacts the frequency response at the listening position. Third, stands help to isolate studio monitors from the desk, floor, or wall. Let me show you what I mean with the demonstration. This is a transducer attached to a metal plate. When the transducer vibrates, it creates resonances within the metal plate at specific frequencies. You can see the sand gathers in the places where the plate isn't vibrating, and it scatters away from the places where the plate is vibrating. At those resonant frequencies, the sound of the plate vibrating becomes much louder. The same thing happens when you place your studio monitors directly on a surface, such as a desk or shelf, without any isolation. The desk, for example, will resonate at specific frequencies which are determined by the size and shape of the desk. And those resonances will combine with the sound from the studio monitors themselves and will cause interference. That's why you'll see some features in these stands that aim to isolate the monitors and prevent the energy from being transferred. Some stands reduce the transfer of energy with isolation pads and others by adding density to the stands. That brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Isoacoustics. No matter which stands you choose, you can use Isoacoustics ISO stands or ISO pucks to fine tune the positioning of your speakers and to isolate them. Below the video, you'll find a link to an Isoacoustics calculator that will help you choose the right isolation solution for your monitors. Thank you, Isoacoustics, for sponsoring this video. You can buy studio monitor stands from under $100 all the way up to these sound anchor stands at about $1,300 a pair and even beyond. These ultimate support stands are the most high quality pair that I'll demonstrate in this video. They cost about $320 and they have a few features that set them apart from the others. These stands have a fixed height at 36 inches for use with a standard height chair. Although you could also buy the 45 inch version if that better suits your setup. The MS90 stands have some basic isolation pads here that aim to isolate vibrations and provide space below the speaker so that you can run the cable through the channel within the stand. This keeps everything looking clean and tidy. The larger channel within these stands is capped on each end, allowing you to add weight to the stand by filling it with sand or shot. This reduces the resonance of the stand itself and also helps to isolate the vibrations from being transferred into the floor. The Ultimate Support MS Series stands have a very low profile base. They're sturdy on hardwood flooring with the rubber feet, or you can remove the rubber feet and use these spikes to maintain stability on carpet flooring. The second pair of stands I've been testing are these onstage SMS 6000P stands. They're less than half the price at just over $100 for a pair. These stands have a height adjustment between 36 and 54 inches. They don't offer any cable management except for a little clip on the exterior of the column. And you also don't have the option to fill these stands with sand as you would with the ultimate support stands. There are some thin rubber pads on these stands, but they're more so to keep the speakers from sliding rather than to effectively isolate them. The bases on these stands also have rubber feet or carpet spikes, but the triangular bases aren't as low profile as the tripod style that we saw on the other stands. Finally, we've got these Gator Framework stands that attach to the edge of a desk or table rather than standing directly on the floor. The height of these stands varies between 10 inches and 13 inches. Using stands like these helps to keep things off the floor, 
and can be very useful in small rooms where the desk needs to be as close to the wall as possible. But you will of course lose some desk space when using these stands, and you'll also create a very steep desk reflection. Again, any of these stands can be paired with an isoacoustics iso stand or a set of iso pucks. I'm currently using the iso 200s with the ultimate support stands, but as you can see I've removed the built-in isolation pads from the stands. Let's listen to the sound quality differences that you can expect with each of these. Pay close attention to the bass in these examples, as well as the stereo image and the separation between left and right speaker. And let me know in the comments if you can hear the difference. The next video that's on your screen now will help you to optimize the setup of your studio monitors so that you can get the best sound possible. I'll see you over there.